Okay, oh, for one, I didn't know you was a player. Before we hop into this review of chapter 312 of My Hero Academia, please do me a favor and leave your own thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Now, let's get into it. What's up, guys? I got the pencil here, and here we are to review chapter 312 of My Hero Academia also known as the assassin well, well drop the drop the the it's just assassin and honestly i like this chapter too though it it gives me flashbacks and remnants of a prevailing problem and it's making me ask a very pertinent question but we'll get into that let's hop straight to the chapter itself so chapter opens up hawks and midoriya are talking i'm assuming this is midoriya like still in the hospital he's just getting changed and ready to go out into the hero world this is like before we're flashing back again and we get to see hawks talking about how well it seems like due to the fact that we have the doctor they have no way to preserve dead bodies so we can't just let them well no they can't just take you dead and like get one for all out of you later so they're probably going to capture you alive and the thing is for them to do that it's kind of hard to do considering you have one for all and on top of that not many people at tartarus were capable of that however if this this one lady this one certain person she can do it and like i'm glad that there's a powerful character that they're worried about but at the same time like why is midoriya needed alive why is one for all needed like can't they just kill him <laughs> i'm not i'm not really gonna lie to y'all like the thing that's getting me is we don't really have a concrete reason other than pettiness for all for one to be so determined to bring one for all back alive because very easily he could just get rid of the problem because you can't pass it on through like forced taking of it you can't just eat the hair afterwards once they're dead as long as they if they don't give you your consent you can't take the quirk at least that's how it was explained. Who knows? You know, Quirk Singularity, it could change every whim any minute. Whatever Horikoshi says it does, it says it does. But at least at the moment, from the rules established, I know rules are very shaky in the My Hero Academia world, we can't, in all for one's mind, what's more important? Getting one for all, the only thing that can stop him, or getting rid of one for all, the only thing that can stop him. In my mind, if I'm all for one, no matter how petty I am, I feel like it'd be even pettier to just get rid of it. Like, imagine your brother, who you despise, I'm assuming, at this point. I mean, who knows? Apparently, he may not despise, may not have enough hatred in his heart, and that's why he needs Shigaraki. But, basically, you're the lord of the evil underworld, and the only thing getting in your way is some, like, now 16, I believe, year old kid with one for all. Shoot him! Get rid of him! Why Why still even risk it? Like, why risk him getting stronger? Especially if you have someone like Lady Nagant, who can just execute him. Legitimately. She's killed heroes before, so I doubt she has any qualms killing a kid, because he's still a hero. So... I don't know, I don't really get the whole obsession with all for one, getting one for all, especially considering it's more of a liability than an asset at this point. Sure, it'd be a great power boost, you have eight separate people combining in on top of your already extended power set, but not gonna lie, floats already copied by Airwalk, which all for one had. All for one could match the raw power of one for all via using all the augmentation quirks he had. Sure, it wasn't as clean cut and precise as one for all, but it got the job done. At the same time, he has pretty much access to every single quirk he could need, and if not, due to how common quirks are, he probably could just go get better versions of the ones that are in one for all. Like, I know the quirk singularity is making all those quirks stronger, and Danger Sense is pretty cool, but I'm assuming you could get these same kind of quirks somewhere else. I feel like the power is more of a liability than an asset at this point. And what do you do with liabilities? You get rid of them. But that's neither the here nor there. Let's move further into the chapter. We'll talk about that again in a bit. And we get to see that Hawks is concerned that a certain lady hero who turned villain or turned enemy, a traitor public safety hero, is a menace. And please, do everything you can to just run away if you run into her. And that is Lady Naga. And the thing is, interesting, that bullet that she fired is apparently made out of her hair. Like I thought. I think I mentioned that. I think I thought that. I'm not sure. I need to rewatch my old reviews before I record these. But basically, we get to see that she has the ability to make bullets out of her hair. And I'm assuming, I'm wondering though, because only the back end of the bullet that was fired at Midoriya that spoke to him seems to be, oh no, okay, I get it now. But like, she spoke through that, didn't she? I'm pretty sure she spoke through it. So she fired straight through a phone. I thought she fired straight through, wait a second, hold on. Yeah, she fired straight through his phone. So how did she speak to him? Is there like a microphone in the bullet? Or it, it, is that is that is that the thing is? Is there a speaker in the bullet that she managed to speak through? Hold on one second. Yeah, it seems like her hair can take on like 
countless countless properties that's a bullet with a microphone like she doesn't speak through a phone attached to the bullet like she straight talks out her own hair fibers which is um interesting i guess i like the way snipe describes it later on in the chapter is that she can form different types of bullets out of her hair she just needs to mold them into the proper shape she can form hollow tip bullets which will explode and rend you apart from the inside and she can also create ones that curve which as i'm assuming is the kind of bullet she made for that second shot she somehow managed to make that bullet have that perfect spin on it with enough force fire from her arm so that it could throw back even deku which is impressive i'll admit but how does she make a microphone bullet is that the only thing throwing me off like is anyone is that a thing are there bullets where you can just like speak through i don't know but then again this is quirk so it doesn't really matter but at the same time it kind of just threw me off i thought she like had a microphone attached but no that's literally just her hair from the looks of it and it's interesting to hear about snipes quirk i'm not gonna lie because i was always wondering why snipe didn't just cap shigaraki like the way he was firing off my man fired multiple bullets through shigaraki you should have just like paralyzed him maybe like shot him through the chest or something like that something i don't know but apparently his hitting targets are like completely random which seems I guess as long, that's probably why he fires so many bullets at once, because like, I doubt they're gonna go to the same spot, so he figures as long as I lock onto somebody and I can just keep bang, bang, banging, then they're gonna die eventually, or gonna get hit in some vital area eventually, which is smart enough. So I wish we could see more of him, I'm not sure where he is, he seems like a very potent hero in this time period, because he could just lock onto multiple targets and just take them all out at once, but then again, it's completely random and he may have retired, we don't know. And we get to see what Lady Nagant used to look like. And I'm not going to lie, I'm still completely disgusted by her arm. <laughs> like, it still throws me off. And the thing is, I had a weird quirk idea before where, like, a person could transform their body into different weapons, but they would literally become the weapon. Like, their arm wouldn't look like a fleshy version of a sniper rifle. It would literally just become a sniper rifle, which they could aim with their other hand and stuff like that. I, the way Horikoshi did this one, he did the quirk rifle, is that her arm literally like folds back. It seems to, especially in this particular shot, it seems to pull back to reveal a rifle underneath and then she can fire from it. It's, it's a very interesting quirk. I'll give it that. It's a very interesting quirk, and I'm honestly wondering what that quirk activation process looked like. Like, imagine her being in kindergarten, just like Bakugo and Deku were, and like Bakugo fired off little explosions, and suddenly she just, her arm just retreated and showed off a gigantic gun. Like, how did this work? How did it grow? But we're never gonna learn that. At least I doubt we're ever gonna learn that. But I think that's just, it's a really cool quirk. I can't wait to see more of it. And honestly, I kind of just want her to be like more active. I, I hope she doesn't, I hope she isn't a one-off. That's what I'm saying. Like, I want to see her quirk be used more because of how interesting it is. And seemingly the endless possibility she has with her bullets and her combination of skill on top of her bullets. And then, luckily enough, Midoriya, being that tactical boy now, instantly figured out where she came from. Well, not instantly. He took the first shot and the second shot, figured the trajectory, and figured out which building she was on. And this is where the situation flips, where Midoriya takes my advice, where he's like, hey, yo. Why keep playing the range game against a range master if I can come in and kick you in the face? And that's what Midori is going to do, and I'm excited to see that. And here's the thing. We see Overhaul. We see Big Papa Overhaul. And the thing is, I like Big Papa Overhaul. He's a cool dude. But the thing about Big Papa Overhaul right now is he's not so much Big Papa, he's just Overhaul. As in, he seems like a broken man, as Lady Nagant calls him. And he just says he wants the old man. He wants his dad. And, well, technically not his dad. His adoptive father. I'm intrigued to see the meaning behind this. Like, is he just, like, heartbroken and wants to go back to the good old days of him ruling alongside or underneath his father? Or is this, like, a trick? And I know this seems like a very long game for Overhaul to play. But remember, Overhaul is defenseless right now. He really has no way to get around. He has no way to do anything. My man has no arms, no connections, no physical thing he can go and do. All of his main men are captured as far as we know. Who knows? They may have been in Tartarus and they may have broken out. We've just not been able to see it. Where's Rappa? Please bring me Rappa. But the thing is, I feel like Overhaul may be playing a long game to try and get a pity party to get him back somewhere. I know guys in the comment section last week were talking about how hypothetically this could be Overhaul trying to get to Midoriya in order to manipulate him into bringing him Aerie so he can get his arms back, which I would find cool. But on top of that, I also heard the ideas that you guys were proposing that his quirk could spontaneously evolve upon seeing Midoriya again and he could like manipulate everything from all over his body. That's also a possibility. I'm more fine with the first one. like. If Aerie is used as a detriment to the narrative on top of her possible positives for the narrative, then I'm good for it. Even though I, I kind of just want 
like some someone shoot Aerie with one of her own bullets. Like just get her quirk out of the narrative because it always is just a looming fear for me. Not as much anymore considering she's like everyone from UA has been pushed out the narrative at this point, which makes sense. But still, it always worries me. But the thing is, I want to see Overhaul do something. Like it's cool seeing him sad and broken down like this, but at the same time, this is not the overhaul I signed up for. Give me the proper overhaul. But then, speaking of the proper overhaul, we get a proper villain man with All for One. And honestly, I forget how titanic All for One is at times. Like, he stood evenly with full size All Might. I always forget that. Like, seeing him tower over Lady Nagant and Overhaul is just an, it's such an imposing shot. And I love how jovial he seems to be. And I like how my man is a player. He's like the traitor hero, the beautiful Lady Nagant. And I know he said that in that weird raspy voice, but still, my man, he, he knows he knows how to play his cards right. He knows how to play his cards right. And Lady Nagant points out the obvious that, oh yeah, I, I tried to kill you in the past. Well, maybe not kill you, but I, I was chasing you in the past. And then All for One does some does some low key. See, I can't reference god of high school because it's nowhere near animated to the point and i doubt all y'all are cut up but this reminds me of a certain character's ability in that show where all for one makes the perfect leap of guesses that deku's gonna leave ua and he's gonna be hunting out for him and thusly he should be out with the top three heroes and thusly he should have nagant go and hunt him down in a higher situation where it's harder for them to get in contact with him such as in rainy night like he 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 could see the future on that one like that was so clean that it's kind of disturbing like he knew and i guess that just feeds into how smart one for all not one for all all for one is i think that's cool but at the same time wow that's a leap that's like that's like three different leaps at once you're assuming that deku's gonna leave not only is deku gonna leave but he's gonna be out and about enough that a rainy night wouldn't get him back inside and three you're gonna assume that he's with the three heroes and they won't be in close enough proximity to help him anyway like that's a triple combo that you just had to guess and he was absolutely right and the thing is we get to learn more about lady nagant and why she betrayed she hates the evil hero society and the thing is i'm wondering why we don't really have a reason for her to hate it just yet we don't have a shigaraki type backstory we don't have a dobby type backstory where we completely understand why lady nagant is down with the sickness and ready to murder multiple of her former allies i guess at least that's what she was saying and I can understand it a bit more because she's not necessarily under the hero commission, she's under the public safety commission, and those are the same people who raised Hawks, and we know they're corrupt. So I can sort of get where she's coming from, but I'm gonna need a little bit more. Because now, after saying she's not gonna do all that for all for one, she instantly hops on to the fact that, oh, well, this boy's the key to destroying the hero society, guess I'll do it anyway. And then another thing she points out is that she's taking overhaul because he could be useful in the future. And I was thinking this same thing too earlier. I'm not sure if I said it when she was first introduced, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the past that overhaul still is a unique asset. Like he may be broken, but that man still has connections upon connections upon connections. And as long as he can get his arms back, he can probably get his same pompous influence back. Because overhaul, despite how sadly he got bodied by infinite 100% one for all, was still like a menace among menaces. One touch and you were dead. So I feel like my man could be a very useful asset on both like the social world and in sheer power if he gets his powers back. But the thing is, she is watching over him, not just because he could be a useful asset, but because he is another victim of the evil pro-hero society. Interesting. I'm very intrigued with what she means by that, because what happened with her? I need, that's the thing. Now I need to know her backstory. Horikoshi, forget the, forget the modern manga. Let's just flashback. Let's just flashback. Give me a whole arc centered around Lady Naga. I'm intrigued. I need more. I need more knowledge. I need more info. I need to know her connections to Overhaul. How does she even know about Overhaul? Because Overhaul, like... Was he a public figure? I mean, she was probably part of the underground for a while, so maybe she did know, maybe she was in that ring and she heard about Overhaul and thinks he could be useful. I need backstory, gosh darn it. Forget the modern narrative. Ain't no one care about Midori. No, I'm kidding. But the thing is, we also get to see that All for One lended her quirk, and it was Airwalk. The quirk he used, I believe, when he was walking on air. Well, not walking on, obviously walking on air, come on now. But he was walking on air towards All Might when he was lording over him. And that seems like a very interesting quirk for her to have, but I feel like she's playing herself. Like, I know what the plan is, like, relocate so Midoriya can't find you. But on the same level, Midoriya, I don't know how long she's been training with Airwalk. But I know her arm, at least by the way she moves earlier in the chapter, 
her arm seems to have some sort of recoil that requires her to be planted. Like you can see in the earlier shot, she was in the last chapter, she was bound to the ground by the flesh extensions of her arm. And after firing her shot, her arm reels back with recoil. So I feel like in midair where she has nowhere to plant herself, if Midoriya gets too close, she's kind of done, son. Because Midoriya, who has like very good mobility, you can see it in how he's using Black Whip earlier in the chapter to try and move around, sort of on a Spider-Man type beat. And then you can also see it in how he's sort of, I'm not sure if he's using Float, Nana Shimura's quirk, but I think he's using that as well. Float on top of Air Force, the ability for him to just fire himself off into the air. And on top of Black Whip, like he has so many more mobility options in midair that I feel like Lady Nagant's biggest weakness right now is that she's going to start using a new quirk that she's never had before on top of the fact that her original quirk already requires solid ground to really function well or at least aim well. Maybe she's fine with sending herself off in a different direction as long as she can land the shot, but I feel like firing in mid-air even if you are walking on air is much different in comparison to firing solidly on the ground i'm not sure how well her skills have been adapted to this new scenario and i feel like that may be her specific downfall like midoriya may end up pressuring her to keep moving in the air until he can lock her down but overall really interesting chapter once again very very short maybe have all chapters just been 14 pages and i've just been lacking like have they all been hold on let me go back to a random chapter no some have been 16 so yeah i feel like horikoshi really just is super busy right now but it's not like the art quality has dropped at all it's just that sometimes the backgrounds are getting a bit more blander but still he's doing all the great work in terms of character design character planning stuff like that i love seeing it he's still a fantastic artist honestly and i love how you can see she was more carefree like her hair was like this is once again this is why i need backstory because you can see when she was lady nagant when she had her her when she was in her hero days she seemed a lot more light-hearted her hair was up in a ponytail it was way longer she has a big old grin on her face she's playful i and then you take a look at modern lady nagant where she just seems like tired annoyed of everything and doesn't really enjoy the current way of things so i want to know what happened but at the same time i'm afraid i won't get to know what happened but regardless still super good chapter super solid it's great to hear more it's great to have a little more links and hints to bits of the past that are super interesting it's great to see all for one once again i don't know i really like i'm starting to like all for one more and more as a personality the more and more we get to see of him and hear of him but still him as a character is kind of a little bit lacking the pickle head but the thing that i to the only things that i have to ask is one lady nigga you are a master of your craft and that means you are a proper sniper now I'm not saying that giving away your position is like the end all be all as a sniper. I have no idea about what it is as a sniper, but from all the video games I've watched and all the let's plays of video games I've watched, I feel like you kind of played yourself by not disabling him. Like I would understand the possibility of possibly hitting him in an artery if you shot him in the leg or trying to disable him somewhere else. But I feel like that first warning shot shouldn't have just been through his phone it should have like been through his arm or something like that like disable him or something because now you're facing a highly mobile threat that is 100 percent capable of ranging you out with black whip and or air force and you're wielding a new quirk like i feel like lady nagant is very very good in a situation where she's hard to reach but midoriya through his new mobility skills she's not very hard to reach at all like he can very easily just chase her down if need be but who knows? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe she's going to have some super secret technique on top of Airwalk in combination with the rifle arm. Also, I wonder where overall is hiding. Like, is my man just going to be chilling on that building roof? Because she just tells him to hide. I just wanted... I'm kind of confused. I'm wondering where my man's going to go. And I wonder if she's going to... If she gets pinned down by Midori, which is very likely to happen, considering how he's already able to react to her bullets. He already is in a more advantageous situation since she's not on solid ground and he's the one hunting her down and he knows her general location i feel like this on top of danger sense meaning she doesn't have a 100 percent accurate shot at all times i feel like midori is heavily advantaged here i wonder if she's gonna flip the script and use overhaul against him if she knows anything about their previous interactions or if she's just gonna abuse his heroic nature overall really really good this chapter raises a whole ton of questions only one that's really not good in my mind is the idea i need more justification for why all for one isn't just trying to get rid of one for all rather than trying to take it because it's just more at least in my mind it's more of a liability than an asset if i'm missing something if he already explained why he wants it so badly 
please just tell me in the comment section down below. I probably missed it. I don't know. All for one is like he's growing more interesting, but I don't know. His logic doesn't seem to make a hundred percent sense. And Lady Nagan, kind of worried for you. Seems like you're about to get body bagged by that young boy Midoriya. But regardless of that. I'm very intrigued to see where we go. We're in a very interesting spot in the narrative, and I can't wait to see what happens. For some reason, I'm having an, like, an itching, awkward feeling that we're going to cut away soon. Like, cut away from this whole entire situation and maybe back to UA. I don't know why, but like at the back of my mind, something's itching that's telling me that. But hopefully not. I'm actually super intrigued to see how the situation gets resolved. We're in a very interesting spot. I'm liking where we're going, and I can't wait to see how these two interact. And I also want to see some mid or combat, because we really don't have two people that can fly fighting that often so it will be very cool to see lady nagan versus midoriya in a mid-air battle if that's what we get but that's what i want to see tell me what you guys want to see tell me what you guys love the chapter and tell me everything you have to think about in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like share comment and subscribe make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel thank you guys once again so much for watching and i hope you guys have a wonderful day this is that guy with the pencil writing off